So, we'll call the meeting to order at 6.01, the uh, October 13th Conway Select Board meeting, held live here at Town Hall. And we do have a conference line, if people want to dial in, they can. Here are wonderful announcements. Uh, so, has everyone looked at the minutes from the last meeting? Yeah, they're really good. They don't seem okay? It seemed okay. So I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes. A second. I hear a second. And yeah. It's unanimous. At some point, uh, yeah. we should move to approving them because accepting them is something we're going to have to do with the executive session minutes at some point that nobody here was present for, which I'd like to go through. Okay. Hey, could we add the word approve to the word minutes? And that would be a good cue for me. Oh, okay. Instead of just say minutes. So I'll assume we approve the minutes. Well, it should be in any motion, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so we have uh, three, uh, three warrants. We have a vendor warrant for 43,725.22, a payroll warrant for 110,968.64, and a payroll deduction warrant for 27,778.53. Uh, we got them in the mail. Did everyone get them? So I'll make a motion that we that we approve those warrants. Do we hear a second? Yeah. So some nods. All in favor. So I'll just, uh, unanimous. So meetings attended by select board members. So so let's see, Erica, do you wanna? Uh, nothing since no? our last select board meeting. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Phil? Yeah, uh, boy, meetings every day since our last select board oh, no. meeting. Um, so, uh, one, yeah, one of the consequences of opening up with a very complicated, opening schools up with a very complicated uh, hybrid plan. In fact, a plan that the Commissioner of Education called as co complicated of a plan as was executed throughout the state. Um, but he meant that in a congratulatory way, by the way. But anyway, um, it, it, we have, we're, 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 we, there was regrets that it wasn't, we did try a more simplified uh, aspect to it all. And uh, but one of the things that we're aware of is that we need to execute more memorandum of understandings with our union because e there's even more si professional situations that have changed. So we've had to start those negotiations again. We did conclude the negotiations for a memorandum of understanding with Gribco. Um, and we do have an agreement that Frontier voted on, a, 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 a change in the inner agreement that Frontier voted on in the Conway Grammar School will be voting on this Thursday. So I can't really talk about the specifics of that absent an executive session until that's voted and approved in Conway. Um, but that is also just a complicated, and that has separate, separate uh, choice points in the future where depending on how things go or depending on how the contract is going to be and we have revised rates for um for, for uh, at home for online or virtual uh, you know whatever and, and for unanticipated school closures etc so, so are they doing student pickup and delivery like normal they are or? the first few days there was uh, zero students that wanted that in our town uh -huh. um, since then there's been a few every day that have wanted it if you've seen the buses go by there's usually one or two on them um, um, but they are they they are only ser they're servicing Conway now with two buses instead of the usual three. Yeah, and they've redone the routes to uh, make that possible. Um, uh, and then so so yeah, there was the frontier meeting where that was all approved that that, that was approved um, as well. So the, and then um, there was the I don't know what you call them the EMS meetings uh, regarding the weather event of October 7th and 8th um, um, that, that uh, there's multiple meetings involved in that including one this morning and uh, one that one on the 8th a little bit of one on the 7th um, 
And there, there's a lot going on with that. And so I guess I should talk about that. Or are we going to talk about that later, Tom? Yeah, I added a discussion under I yeah. not anticipated. Yeah. So we'll wait. And new business. So great. I had none. I had no meetings this week. Uh, one today. Yeah. So any public comment? We have no, no public here to comment, and no one's on the phone. Um, so for old business on the agenda, we have creating the Forest and Trails Committee. Is there a proposal for that, Tom? Or is it just discussion? Well, uh, I thought we would discuss it. I was hoping that we'd have people from the Open Space Committee and Parks, Rec, and Trails. Uh, because we don't have anyone from those committees here, I think we can assume that they have no compelling um, interest one way or another. Um, but I would, um, and therefore we, we have done our due diligence in, in trying to consult with them. Um, I, I do think we ought to have um, a charge for all the committees that we create, and we should probably look at charges for ones that already exist as well, just to make sure that people know what their, um, why the select board or town meeting is forming the committee. Um, with this one, I wanted to especially include oversight of the forest stewardship plan. Um, and uh, someone had wanted to seek grants to further the goals of that um, and to, uh, you know, develop, develop our um, forests and trails, um, you know, further over, you know, until, we, until it's time to get a new plan, uh, so, so not be limited by the plan. Um, and also to oversee the maintenance of town trails, which of course go, uh, <clears throat> some of them through the town forests. I wanted to be sure to include mapping. There is an old map of trails through Conway, uh, but I think it could uh, use an update and uh, a little more uh, uh, computer mapping sophistication, I think. And, and we're, we have now tools that will help us be able to do that. We have several GPS units, um, and those could, uh, those could be used. Um, and I, I just threw in to harmonize the uses of forests and trails for the, just to make sure that we're talking about a, a unified effort here, that, that we don't want to balkanize the trail people or the forest people, but really get them to work together for the use of the land. So that's what I suggested as a charge. Um, what I'm wondering is maybe we should put this up on the town website and as a proposal, mm -hmm. but... And ask for people who might be... I, I, I think we need you to know, table, generate table a list of discussion. people. Uh, it, it, I, I mean, I would just, you know, with the, with the wind event, maybe people just are not thinking about town business oh, yeah, this yeah. week. And, and, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not for, uh, for, for forming the committee at this point. Yeah. I think we, this is one, is one especially where we want to get names of people who might be interested. And the select board would then um, select from among those people uh, the best people to form a, a balanced and productive committee. So uh, that's, that's what I thought some of the discussion should be uh, tonight. Did uh, we and, decide and that we were going to table this for a couple months till after the holidays? Last meeting? Till after the holidays? Yeah. Oh. I thought that was... Well, again, I mean, I, um, I'm not... I'm not looking for any action on it at this point, uh, but I think if we started to let people know that, you know, because my, my concern was just the form and nature of the committee as well. That uh, you know, I'm, I'm I'm approaching this from a slightly different point of view, and that is the point of view of wanting to fulfill the obligations of our the recently awarded twenty thousand dollar feasibility study grant, and then furthermore wanting to have the mechanism in place that the feasibility study will find in our favor and we get funded for an entire program. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah. so, so the, and when I think about like what kind of a committee, I mean, you know, I, certainly we don't want to do that all ourselves, but when you think about what kind of a committee would, would be most helpful towards those goals, you come to the conclusion of uh, uh, 
the answer would be a committee that the select board has a pretty tight grip over. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's the truth. And, and, and so, I, so I, it, that might be a countervailing purpose to some of the other things that the committee might be charged with, however. But, um, but it, it, it is... Well, uh, certainly it's always good to have a select board member on the committee. You, you know. Right. Uh, uh. Right. I mean, you know, the, the, this is, it's, uh, and I, I, it's a similar situation, say, when, uh, when the, the Frontier decides to form a committee with select board members and, and uh, town coordinators and town administrators, et cetera. And, and um, you know, you, you, you have to be careful that the committee you form uh, isn't going to be composed of people that don't want what don't want the purposes you don't don't want success don't want the committee to have success in the goals that um, uh, you know like for the the, 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 the the initial committee that was formed for for the the, the track compo was composed of a former Deerfield selectman who thought uh, you know tax purposes for education it, it should you should never spend tax money in education um, well, and exactly, and that's why I think it needs a strong charge. So can but, I just ask a question? Did, formerly it was the Parks, Recreation, and Trails Committee, and now it's just Parks and Recreation, and so there is no well, oversight of trails? I, I think it would become that once the select board you know, took action on this. And, I, and I, I'm not suggesting that we hurry to do this. I'm just thinking, right. you know, we, we have now formed this thing, and if we want... Uh, we could specifically, I, I, I think it, it might not be a, a good idea to specifically mention, you know, working on a, the carbon credit study grant because once that's gone, you know, then that's no longer the charge of the committee. Um, but you mean if that fails? If yeah, that well, or, or we, you know, we did it. And, and, and it's up and running and it's a regular thing. Um, so so um, rather than getting specific though, I think you know the select board can, can, can vet people and say, you know, this is what we have on tap, are you interested in working in this? And that becomes a factor in considering whether or not they would be a useful person on the committee. Because of course we have things in mind and that's number one, you know, um, because that, that, that would, you know, as Phil has pointed out, that would, that's a money maker for the town and a good thing to do and groundbreaking, all kinds of great things about it. So it is important that, um, that committee members be on board with that um, and that that is an early part of the work of the committee. Um, oh, absolutely. So, so this is, I think, a good discussion to have. Well, I think someone expressed concern last time that we already have a lot of committees that have unfilled seats, that it's, it's a challenge to get people to sit on committees. So that is true. Is there a possibility of just floating the idea of creating a community, a, a committee with this specific charge and see whether it's even feasible, whether we even get enough people? That's what we'll have to do, yes. I mean, Jana made it pretty clear she didn't want to extend the Open yeah. Space Committee yeah. to do this. Uh, and they are, they're, one of the, they're a tremendously active group. So I've already heard from two people and with diametrically opposite views on things that I had never thought would, you know, one who wanted to participate in this to make sure that horses have a right of access to all of our trails. One who wants to participate in this to keep horses out of their mini bike's way. <laughs> And um, I think they should both be. <laughs> and and so you know, so that's pretty interesting. Well, and, and that's a good opportunity for a committee like that to work out Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, and yeah. Tuesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Yeah. You know that kind of thing. Yeah. So yeah. That, so that you guys don't have to do that. Yeah. <laughs> well, or some of the trails for horses and some of the trails for other things. Well, yeah, how, how, however it works out, but, but it would help to have people who are interested in having a result work together to hammer out something that is a consensus document. 
for and then, policy. And then what other people have brought up is that, hey, you know, it doesn't matter what rules for usage you put, we have no bylaws to enforce them. So it's all just sort of, you know. A bylaw can propose, a, a committee can propose a bylaw if they want to. I, I, I think a bylaw might be heavy handed here, but, you know, it depends on how the people of the town uh, do respond to the plan. Do people want to ride, ride their horses on a snowmobile trail in the winter? They do. They do. Yes. Yes. Oh, there's, yeah, mm. you see them all over. Winter especially. It's good for horses riding. Um, but, yeah. Uh, so I just wanted to, you know, bring up a few, a few ideas, including having a, a charge for the committee, which you know. Could we add something about the carbon program to the charge? Do you think it's too specific? Well, that that was what I was what I was sort of getting at before. That um, it is. Um, what do I say in here? Uh, it is a goal of the forest stewardship plan. Right. So I think when the the select board is asking people at this point if they're interested in joining the committee, we can ask, you know, here is our priority for implementing the plan. Uh, are you willing to work on that? And then, um, you know, use that as a, as a means of, of, you know, who's going to be on it um, right now that's going to be good. Later on, in three or four years, that might not be the question that the select board asks prospective applicants. Well, for now, we will. We're not going to vote on anything right now. No, no. But I, I, I think this is a good opportunity to, you know, kick around some of these ideas and, yeah. and especially the timeline too. So, you know, you know, Bill, if you're thinking January, I don't know. I, I don't think we're likely to find out about the. Um, well, do, do you know when uh, Williamsburg is likely to contact us about an article? Yeah, we're going uh, to try to set up a November meeting. Okay. So Post-election day. Yeah, so conceivably, December, more likely post-holiday, um, getting together people to... Um, see, the thing is, I... I think we have a deadline of June. Do we have a deadline of June 30th for the uh, study? <clears throat> um, I, there is a yeah. I, I, that's there's some flexibility in that. Apparently, it's but yeah. Um, but that is an important day for sure. Yeah. For so um, you know the the initial stage is getting the RFP out and getting the right. consultant hired and all right. that sort of stuff is yep. is something that doesn't necessarily need a committee to help it out with, but. Um, you know, something to give input and to focus input through, have the committee be the place where um, any hearings are held or public meetings, that kind of thing. Uh, it might be useful to have a committee by the time we're at that stage. I agree. I agree. So that's why, like, last one last meeting, I was like, it's, it's going to be a couple months so I, before I'm at the place where... I can say this is where we want to delineate labor. And this is what so we want to do. So a couple months is early in December. In December, January, yeah. So, but realistically, December is pretty tough to get anybody to come to anything or pay attention to anything. Usually, yeah. But I don't know how it's going to be in this pandemic world of ours, but um. yeah, we we don't want to uh, squeeze the consultants so much. You know, I would think you know six months would be plenty of time to do something. Um, but I'm not a consultant in the field, so um, I think it probably depends on how much we ask them to do in the RFP. So, yeah, that, that's, that's my only consideration yeah. about the planning is actually, you know, making sure the project has enough time to happen. Because, you know, our, our I, think, I think our four stewardship plan would have been not as good if we had had to stick to the original timeline. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So what do you think for a time? January? Yeah. Well, but, let, let's, let's play yeah. it by ear, see when the Williamstown thing okay. comes through. And, and um, in the meantime, if anybody has any ideas about the charge or people who might be interested or 
different ways to compose it, you know, let me know. And so uh, just uh, I just thought a, a, a sentence in there about um, carrying ca carrying out the wishes of the town and the, the select board with regard to town property or whatever I don't know, but something something about subordinating. Oh, their select board policy. Yes, yes. So yes. Um, to oversee this forest stewardship plan in accordance with select board policy. Exactly. Yeah. One of the things we talked about the committee doing was developing the best practices. Yeah, that Dad mentioned over and over again. Oh, okay. That that would be uh, implementation of any action items, uh, especially developing best practices. That was something just to continue on the, you know, the work that they they did. And I mean, there, there's been some things that some of the people that were interested in this have already talked about that they want to do ASAP, which is start writing to our legislators about opposition to the state cutting uh, in state forest. Um, well, that, and especially that 10 year plan that that seemed really over the top um, when I took a look at that, that 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 was whose plan? The state's 10 year plan for logging in the Conway State Forest through uh, Cricket Hill. Um, that was that. That's really something. And they, if they put that to a vote, that wouldn't get one vote in this town. It wouldn't. Yeah, and if people are interested in drafting a, a letter for the select board to send, they don't have to wait for a committee to form to do that. So if if yeah. anybody has any specifics on that that they want to say, you know, we oppose, especially this approach and this approach and this approach and this detail and that detail, that would be very helpful. Are there any groups that are doing that now, that are composing letters about that? Uh, I mean, now that you can bring letters that, you know, it's like for the sign of the board. Or, it's, it's good that there are people that are really passionate about this stuff and about yeah, this issue. Yeah. And I'm glad that they even live in this town. Um, but the, the reality is that if you ask, like, it doesn't matter what the issue is, if you ask like a fire breather on any issue to um, to represent your views or to to, to do something like write a, write a letter for us, um, you end up with a fire breathing letter. Mm -hmm. and, uh, well, you don't have to send a fire breathing letter. Yeah, and then and then you end up with hurt feelings that you just sent the letter without the fire, and then. Uh, <laughs> well, that. that Sometimes you you get more flies with honey than with vinegar. Not I mean, and honey might be going a little bit too far, but well, I, I haven't gotten anything in my email about group doing letters uh, 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 about the state forests. So, I mean, there's a lot of letters about cutting back on burning wood, burning biomass. There's a there's a, a lot of pressure not to make electricity from biomass. Well, the, the two people that have called in here repeatedly about this issue, um, uh, about the state forest, specifically about the state forest, are both people that have asked that the select board write letters. And I didn't say you draft them, yeah, we'll, we'll sign them, but. Uh, well, at least come up with a list of points that can be made. I mean, the choice of, of adjectives you know, maybe me. That mileage may vary. <laughs> yeah. Do you think they'd be willing to do that? Write a letter? Or or, or, a letter? or yeah. come up with a series of points that can be turned into a letter. You know, what's what's the thirty thousand foot objection? What's the you know, detailed objection, stuff like that. That you know, that can go a long way because that gives people that gives the, the policymakers in Boston something to say, okay, this we can do. This we can't do, you know, because they're balancing competing interests, obviously. So um, maybe they can get some of the details done, but not the higher level stuff. Or maybe they can, you know, try for the higher level stuff and fly it up the flagpole and, and see how far it goes. But something, something that 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 gives specific objections rather than scrap the plan, because that's not, you know, as productive. 
Well, I can certainly ask around to see if anybody knows of any letters like this that are in the works. There might be. And I, I was speaking with um, with Adam Hines' uh, legislative assistant, John. John Poole. About something about school financing. But, um, but he, he uh, um, you know, he reminded me that if, if any one of this, the towns have an issue that they want to be addressed in Boston, a really good way to start it is to write your own law. Yeah. To write a proposed law. And that, um, and that it can, they, you have, we have the right of direct, the towns can directly petition the general court, the state, that, and, and they, can, they will vote on the law that we write if we write it and get it submitted. It, it, it can be even more productive to write a law and give it to somebody like Adam Hines or right. give it to legislative council right. to draft the law the way. Yep, yep. Yeah. But, um, so I mean, it's kind of the same thing. If you want us to do something, write us up something and let us work with it. And, you know, and we're sitting there saying, well, you write it up. It's, you're good at that. Well, uh, and that, that's what I'm getting at. For, yeah. For, uh, um, yeah, thank you. Uh, Well, should we go on? Sure. So new business. Do we have a, a warrant to sign? Yeah. You all got copies of that. The town clerk produces the warrant, gives it to the select board, and we, so you guys sign it, and it gets... And that's in the back of our packet posted, here? ...posted, and then it's, then it's legal. Yeah. I thought it was really cool. Some, some of the stuff I really get a kick out of, the, the question three and um, question four, just the, so, so I, I, I don't know if you realize this, but for Tom, Conway's entire town history, the main thing that town meeting would do was instruct its representatives with like, in language just like this. Uh, we instructed our representative unanimously to vote against the adoption of the U.S. Constitution. Um, and things like that. And uh, I always thought we've gotten away from that as a town meeting, but I like the language of it and I'm intrigued and that this is also appropriate language for town meeting. But even if we instruct our representative, that doesn't, I mean. No, we, but. We can no, instruct them, they, but that's. They, yeah, but. No, uh, <laughs> it's the spirit of the thing. Yes, yes. So it's interesting that we're, we're going to be signing this on, on the day when a lot of people already got their ballots. So, but it's the same thing. Yes. So I'll make a yeah. motion that we sign, uh, sign the, this warrant for the election. Yeah, where's the signature page? Uh, well, I've got it right here. So we all in favor? Yeah. Aye. I heard a second. And we're all in favor, unanimous? Yes. So. So today is 10-13. Yeah, oh my God. I would have added one to this ballot that we instruct our representative to deliver us a state budget before the month of December of the fiscal year that started six months before the budget is being delivered. Well, a lot of these ballot questions take something like 10,000 signatures to get them on the ballot, so, on the warrant. No. Bill doesn't have that kind of time. No. 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 I, I was shocked at, there the school, at the school, at the meeting with the commissioner of education that I overheard where him saying we're not going to get a state budget before December. I'm uh, just shocked. So Jeffrey Claremont to become a a transfer station attendant. We have yeah, a letter here from uh, Carl. You have in your packet a letter. Thank you. Um, and this is this is an on-call transfer station attendant, not a not a regular transfer station attendant, but they need on-call attendance as well for when. The regular ones can't make it, so um, that is the request of the Board of Health. So he will be turned to fill in. That's great. Yes. I just had a and oh, sorry. 
Oh, I, I, uh, I regret that um, uh, recent events and the general chaotic um, nature of things in the last couple of weeks has prevented me from um, uh, bringing uh, uh, my, my glorious new administrative assistant uh, quite up to speed. So I don't have the um, appointment form or uh, I guess the form would be the only thing. I don't have that ready to sign yet, but if you could make the appointment, then we can get you the form. So I just had a question about this last paragraph about the um, hourly wage of the current transfer station attendants? Is this just because the change to the minimum um, wage began last year and these employees are grandfathered in? Um, I mean, the towns, towns are exempt from that. Towns, oddly enough, are exempted from paying minimum wage, uh, which isn't to say that we shouldn't, and I absolutely advocate it. Um, it is up to the Board of Health to provide for this in their budget. So I have, I replied partly to this letter by saying, you know, please include the wages they're, they're you would like wages. in your FY22 okay. budget. Um, it, so they're, they're, this is in some ways a heads up letting us know that their, okay. their wages and salaries budgets can go up. And what is the state minimum wage? Right now, twelve dollars, I think. It's fifteen oh, here. Oh, January first, it's, it's going 15. up to January first. It's fifteen. Fifteen. It's, it's going up to it right now. Yeah, it's. Yeah. But in, and they'll find out if they try to do it in one fell swoop. It really affects their budget. I mean, to take their page from the schools that you when you're moving those twelves up to fifteen, it takes a few years. Otherwise, yes. Uh, thank goodness it's only a few employees who only yeah. work a few hours a week. Yeah. So uh, I'll make a motion that we do appoint uh, Jeffrey Claremont to become a fill-in uh, uh, on-call an on-call transfer station attendant. Second. Aye. Aye. Great. And is, and that is at a hourly starting wage of twelve seventy-five. All. We'll make that clear in the minutes. Great. Halloween activities. Uh, just put this on because I think it's it's probably good to have a discussion. I think that the um, the town ought to take its cue from the Board of Health because they're the ones who, you know, are responsible for the town's health. Uh, but I I know that um, there may be people wondering, you know, what's going to happen in town, and I haven't heard anything, but maybe you all have. And I put it on just so that we had some time to discuss it and, and plan for whatever people are planning the, to do. The Rag and Shack Parade has been canceled, and the costume in this build, the costume show in this building has been canceled. Ah, excellent. Well, Thank you. Well, those are, those are two awesome civic events that I look forward to every year. But um, uh, they, there is no... I, I mean, Halloween is... A, the trick-or-treating itself has not been... You know, I, I know other towns are planning on letting it happen um, with recommending that it be all outdoor. Um, and I, I don't know whether, I, I, was it Deerfield or Greenfield? One of the local health departments has put out a series of guidelines. I think there was something in the recorder about it. And, and it was to, you know, to keep them out of the, you Put know, your candy in a bowl. Put at the bottom of the stairs, stand at the top of the stairs. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, at your ports and you know, don't go within six feet of the trick-or-treaters, but, you know, so it's sort of pandemic trick-or-treating. Basically, give me your candy and let me get the hell out of here. Uh, but, uh, you know, but, you know, and as a kid, as you probably love it, you get you know, more, more candy, less time. Yeah, for anyone but, who has uh, ever put out a bowl for trick-or-treaters, like, we know how that goes. Like, the first kids that come by, like, that bowl is gone. Up in Northern Conway, nobody trick-or-treats. They all come down to town. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. And I'd just like to point out that even though the, the police and the fire department have been involved in the rag shack, I, that is an event that's put on by um, the Conway Fireman's Auxiliary. And the majority of the members are women of advanced age who just did not feel comfortable yeah, putting the time and, and effort into that this year, which I totally understand. Um, if you think uh, anything should go up on the town website as a notice? Um, maybe whoever 
is responsible for that and give me some language for that, or or I could just put something up. But um, it would help for me to get a note from somebody if you know about those two events. Um, I can I can take care of that. Okay, that's that. great. That'd be great. Thank you. I think they might actually put something in the visitor already. Mm. Um, but I'll ask. But I mean, it'd also be nice to put the health department guidelines, if there were said guidelines, about what homeowners and residents should do, how best to how best to distribute candy to the hordes. So. Um, I will take that as an instruction to communicate with the Board of Health regarding that. Mm -hmm. Who's meeting very shortly. Aren't they meeting tonight? I think they are. And then next we had the wind event over the last couple of days. Yeah. So was there something specific you want to talk about? Uh, no, just, just a discussion. Um, uh, you know, I had, I had originally thought there was um, there was more warning than there was, but but there really wasn't. I went back and checked the uh, the, the the memo at three in the morning uh, on on Wednesday. There was something saying, you know, moderate winds will be coming through, um, and and the, the severity was moderate. And the next one that came out at ten o'clock in the morning said this was way worse than we expected. Things are down all over Massachusetts. We're, we're, we're moving. Um, you mean 10 o'clock uh, the next morning? Yeah, the yeah. following morning. Yeah, um, yeah I... Uh, Is 116 still? I haven't been south of town since last week. Yeah, Is it um, still? Lines are off all the roads. All the roads now are two lane. Uh, the last one that got cleaned up was Whateley Road, and that is now two lanes. So, as far as I know, all, pa all power was restored um, within 24 hours. But there's still questions about telephone and, and 911 access for certain residents. There's still a belief that right now there's still residents in town that do not have 911 service. Um, or reverse 911. If, if, are you saying the, people don't have telephones? Don't, don't have telephone right now. That was what they said this morning, that Verizon still hasn't showed up. Right, but I think those lines are still... I, I think Verizon hadn't shown up, but those lines are open. That is, the, the lines weren't cut. They weren't um, compromised. They were just on the road. That was the problem with the Verizon lines. They well, didn't come and I think get what, them off the road. I, I didn't put it in the book, but the, the, the way that the meeting this morning started was with Kenny saying that he's been getting these, um, uh, the, the call. He, so he gets calls. When someone calls 911 and then they hang up, um, he gets yeah. that it, it automatically goes to Do the you local. Do people are testing that? No, but that, that's the signal that when it's, when it's also like a faulty connection or when the 911 service isn't working. That's the glitch that shows up at oh. Shelburne Control or whatever. So, so, and he's been getting this string of these 911 calls, of callback calls for residences that have no phone service and can't call 911. And can you tell what number they come from so they can trace it and figure out which household? Um, but it's, it's like down, what, the, he's got to guess. Like it's not, it wasn't that many home, homes, but, um, but, and, and that was part of what was going on, that, that there, there, there is sort of a difference between Eversource and, and then there's Eversource in one pile that by and large appears to have done okay, what you know, they they, did, did, did what they could, you know, and although, uh, you know, I, I, I even think that wasn't fair because it was still 24 hours before they had the cruise on site doing anything and I get that there was problems and this and that but 24 hours for a town to be without uh, uh, you know essential services it's just a long time and by that point the number of people without service was below 50,000 statewide and also from the very beginning like it, it, what I saw at 7 o'clock before the cell tower went out 
was news articles on MassLive and Boston.com saying that Conway is the fourth hardest town in the state. Got hit, got hit the yeah, fourth were, hardest yeah. based on percentage of people without power. So it's not like all the other companies didn't have fair notice that they got to get out here. Um, and, and, and you know, and, and I thought, and, and AeroSource yeah, too. Source, it, like, like you know, apparently that when 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 you know, oh, the, you know, there was other people that had more important. You're you're still too far down the feed chain. You know, Deerfield's more people or whatever. The the school, the, the, the hardware store. This you know this this and that. But um, I, you know, I, I when when they got permission from the state a few years back to to draw back on the number of. Uh, bucket trucks and employees that they had on standby in this state when they fully joined that consortium with National Grid and whatever the Connecticut power companies in Rhode Island they have, they all have the same pool now. Yeah. And they got permission from re regulators to save a bunch of money by doing that. And but but by, by promising that response times were not going to be affected. And and this is a, I, I was asking and nobody ever really remembers that it, it of just 24 whole hours before they really could sh muster the crews to show up and start fixing. Once they showed up, stuff was fixed in like a half an hour. Well, there were people longer than 24 hours. Right, but the main trunk, the main trunk with like 600 residents. Was 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 fixed a half an hour after they showed up with all their bucket trucks, and that was and about twenty four hours later. Yeah, yeah, and um, and and you know prior to that point, you had EverSource representatives driving around, not knowing what state they were in. They stopped. I, you know, I talked to the one fella with the Russian accent that question, you know, he thought he was in Conway, New Hampshire. He asked what he asked what road he was on, and. Uh, um, you know, there was just all, there was ever source people right after the storm driving around in cars and trucks that couldn't fix anything, we didn't stop and talk to anybody, and nobody could really figure out what they were doing. Um, um, and, and then it was 24 hours from there until people actually came that could fix anything. And um, I don't know, but that being the case, Eversource was the good was the good, uh, you know, gets the gold star compared to Verizon, which apparently, uh, you know, I, I've actually never seen our first responders this upset about this type of stuff because each one of them felt that a brought Verizon representative made a commitment to them and a promise to them and then just flat out disappeared. No further movement to have your police chief agree to meet one of their vehicles at a certain location, and then them not show up and not ever call, and the you know not not being given a, a, a cell number that works, and all this stuff, and the, you know ver, the the, the our, to, to have your first responders say that Verizon was liars and flat out lied to us, to have them say stuff that Comcast was just utterly undependable, and uh, you know again just ignored contacts and. Um, you know, the, the, and, and then there's a lot of questions about the cell, the AT&T cell phone tower, which is really critical to 911 service when you lose power, how they had a backup of just a few hours, but um, the question was asked repeatedly, hey, you're about to approve a new cell phone tower, can't you put something in that contract that makes them have a longer committed backup? You know, for sure at least 24 hours, but you know, what about just a 48 hour thing that when power goes out, they'll have a backup, that either generator or battery, that'll click on automatically and last for X number of hours, because six, six hours is not enough. And um, I don't know, 48 hours sounds better, I don't know, but that's definitely a thing. So and, is somebody and, gonna contact the, that cell phone operator, that, that tower operator? I'm like, what are you guys gonna do that? The select board should do that. Yeah, yeah. Well, we I mean, need to do it. Um, uh, you know, so that I'll they, try. To, I'll they, try to call. They, they, they were of the feeling that the select board should be should, should write letters to That's fine. you know to, to to our legislators that we should be doing press conferences. They want a letter to the recorder. They especially want Verizon called out. They would love a headline that says you know Verizon lies to first responders in Conway, evades responsibility for. Fixing up their damage, things like that. Um, that, that 
So I, I don't. I did talk with Natalie Blay on the the, 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 the morning after. You know, with, with our power cut that much, or would be. And and uh, they they didn't lose power. I think down in Sunderland, but she was she was in contact with Verizon and EverSource on our behalf. I don't know if it's hard enough. It helped, but. And uh, I am in the process of setting up a meeting with Verizon to go over uh, our complaints with them. Um, I've sent out a proposed time and I'm waiting for responses. And uh, we'll go ahead. That, that would be a Zoom meeting. That would be excellent. With their uh, regional rep in, in Worcester. But the, the loss of 911 service is a, is a big deal. And it's not supposed to happen. And we pay a lot of money so that it does not happen. And uh, so that would be good to have you know talk about that in that Zoom meeting. And the the particulars too of just sort of how these companies have all switched to these contractor models where they don't really have employees, and uh, mm -hmm. the the contractors are often unsure who to call and who to contact to even get authorization to do work when they're on the scene, and it's just. You know, they depend on remote notification. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah. I, I will mention that it was a contractor who helped us out at the True. very end. Um, and, and that was unusual and very welcome. Yes. Yes. So, the, but that, I, I was, um, yeah, that, that whole thing, I, I'm definitely surprised at the level of uh, consternation from our first responders. Mm. And, um, the desire that we really make a noise about this, that it was just not okay, that they got to do better. Okay. So we have a couple items that were not anticipated. The first one I actually asked Tom to put on, and it has to do with uh, that, that, that Jan would like sort of uh, make sure the select board is aware that, that, that FCAT has slightly increased their bill. Slightly. So, well, I've been bugging them to increase it for quite a long time. And that's just the bill to us, or that's the bill for Deerfield and Sunderland? That's the bill for us. What about them? Their bill stayed the same? They're, well, they pay so much more than us that it is uh, unconscionable. And do they have, right. a for, they, they have a formal contract with FCAT? So they, uh, I believe Deerfield has a formal contract, and so we should start thinking about a formal contract for Conway. Chris is more than happy to do that, but we don't have that set up for this meeting. Mm -hmm. But Jan is looking for basically authority for her to pay this bill that's gone from $2,500 to $3,500. And is that for what, what period of time? For so that's for a quarter, uh, the, but, the, so, for the last quarter. So you, so like, usually you find out what more you're getting for the money first, and then you pay the more money. This is paying the more money first, and then we're going to talk to them about what more we're going to get? We are... Ten years ago, when we began officially getting service from FCAT, they had been providing service for nothing. Ten years ago, they said they would provide us with service, and we signed up and we began getting money for FCAT services from Comcast. We had no money before 10 years ago. So 10 years ago, uh, they, we, Comcast began sending Conway a check. And the deal that we originally had with FCAT was we would give you all of that money. And we did for the first couple months. But as, as the number, more people signed up with Comcast, Comcast Cable, and then over the length of the 10-year contract, the percent that we were getting from Comcast went up. Com FCAT never increased the amount of money they were, they, we were sending them. They didn't change the amount they were billing us. The amount of work they were doing, they were doing way more work than we were paying for. And we, were, we are still today being subsidized by Deerfield, Sunderland, and Waitley. That's a beautiful thing. And I'm sure you like that. And, uh, and so, so we were paying $2,500, and I did send you this piece of paper. I don't know if it was included yeah. in, in the chart. But you can see the amount of money that we're now getting from Comcast is $6,000 a quarter. And we've only been giving $2,500 of that to FCAT. And, and the, original, the deal we had with FCAT was we would give it all to them. Bad deal. So, so well. well. 
Well, so, 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 but so, so, so how do you now have $56,000 saved up in an account of unspent FCAT money that we're allowed to spend on things that have to do with public access television? We should. And so, so Tom has been proposing we really should fund a, a building out a, in the school, have an overflow room so that if we have more than 200 people or whatever the number is, that try to come to a town meeting, they could go sit in the, the adjacent classroom and... The classroom yeah. fits, fits 20 people. Cafeteria. Well, cafeteria. Cafeteria would be <laughs> good. It's 70, 50, That'd be 60. better. Um, but then, then we use some of this money to upgrade the school to have, a, have an overflow room. So yeah. my goal for this meeting today is that we authorize that to pay this FCAT bill, and then we will have a formal contract with, with FCAT, and they will say what they're doing, and we will say how we're going to negotiate payments. Now basically, there's two ways we can do this. One is, we could say, you get all of the money except we're going to keep this amount, 10% of it, or some number like that. 10% um, of the money that we get from Comcast. Right. And that's, that's the kind of deal I think that Deerfield has. They keep a small percentage of it and the rest of it goes to Well, they also have a deal that you televise every single one of our board meetings. And FCAT may be more than happy, especially if we funded them a little better, that they would do more of our meetings. And not just select board meetings. Sometimes we have very interesting planning board meetings, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. So, um. so I've asked Chris to find the contract we have with Deerfield and think about how it would have to get changed for Conway. There's got to be a mandatory Conway hiring component. It's got to hire Conway kids. At least one. When he goes to hire kids, he would be very happy to hire Conway kids. He has a hard time finding kids who want to work there. I know. But you know kids that should work there? Do there was a Conway kid until very recently. And there was another Deerfield kid that was dating a Conway kid. So that almost counts. Um, so is there, this is the quarterly bill that's gonna go up $1,000. Is there some kind of like unwritten expectation that it's gonna remain until we hammer out this agreement that the next quarterly bill will be the same? Or is it possible that we can get another bill from them saying we actually wanna go up $1,500? I had to beat them up to get them to send us this increase. Okay. <laughs> no. They should have done this years ago. Okay. Uh, they're, they're not for, it, it, FCAT runs, runs on a shoestring, and, and, and money is a huge issue, and, and, uh, And I, I, I agree that we've been underfunding them for years and, and that this is a fine thing to do. I do want to just point out that there are other uses that the PEG access money can be used for, including our website, to get um, information out to, out to residents. Um, and, and we might um, want, to, want to take a broad view before handing it all over. I'd like to really take a look at that. The, the, the website issue is, is important. I'm glad that you brought that up because that's one of the things. Um, just like for instance, you, I'd be so, you'd be surprised at the level of frustration that exists amongst people just trying to access in, from the members of the general public trying to access public meetings on Zoom and everything else. And there's a general feeling that the information is hard to find and hard to get. And why can't it just be on the if you know you're having a select board meeting, why can't you just post on the cover page of the website how to get on it when before the meeting takes place? And, and the, the same thing with the school committee people, the, all the parents that, you know, we had all those meetings with two and 300 parents showing up and uh, all of a sudden now they want it easy to find out where they want that information, you know, without having to bury through agendas that are buried in calendars and etc. They want to know, uh, you know, every, every meeting that's coming up, they want it, they, you know, can't just, we, we got to make it easier for people to participate in their government. And people are like, yeah, you know, I spend like two seconds looking for it, and then they, they move on to something else. That's the extent of the civic engagement. People are not willing to work with it. 
the fact that they're looking in the first place. The, the fact that that's it. And it's yeah. just like, and I'm, I mean, I'm the same thing. When you're looking for something, you're shopping for something, if you get the tiniest little glitchy weight pause, on, you're on to the next thing. Forget it. And, um, and that's just how people are now. And so um, if we can make just sort of, as institutions, a more concerted effort to be more inviting to the public and just give them that information about how they can participate it's just easier, just make it easier for them, because it's just too, it's just too hard. So and we certainly can put our agenda, a link to our agenda on the website. And well, and, and our agenda is posted in the calendar, yeah. under the calendar. Right, agenda. but that, that, that specifically but was... telling people that would be helpful. Yes. But that specifically was just, oh, that's just so, oh, that's just so hard, you know, I can't do that, that's, what, three clicks? Are you kidding? Just, you know... Three clicks and at least 30 seconds of concentration? That's just way too much to ask. Um, two uh, clicks. It's only two clicks. All right, all right, all right. That, yeah, it's, it's, it's still hard. That, but people are just like, just, can't you just have someone that just do, does that and just puts that on your title page for the meetings that are coming up or just have that easy? So the same yeah. thing came out of the schools, and it's something that I've heard this weekend as well. Um, would we, if, if we were going to spend FCAD money on that, so it's not was, FCAD money. Well, some it's of peg access, peg, that, peg access money. <laughs> Thank you. Could, could you know? Could we spend that money as part of salaries? Ooh, I doubt it, but I can look into it. Uh, I, I mean, that would. This is money we get quarterly that goes into this account, and I don't know if we could call it a revolving account or, you know. No, it's not revolving. If it doesn't say, if it doesn't say you can't, then you can. If it, if, if it doesn't say you can't, then you can. And, and if the statute talks about something that implies a level of service, professional service, is required to achieve, then... I mean, the money that we give, the money from this account that we give to FCAT, they spend on salaries. Right. The primary thing that they, yeah. that they spend. Uh, but I don't know, I don't, so I don't see why we can't do that. Oh, yeah, but, well, all right then. That would be great. Yeah, the, the thing about the, um, the website is is the the front page is is the most valuable real estate on the site, and everybody wants their item to be front and center, the top item in the news, important. You know, we, we have we have three categories in the front. One is notices, which are sort of permanent, important things. Then there's important things, which are impermanent, important things, and then there's the latest news, which is sort of the lowest level, but that's you know, when something new comes up, it's usually under latest news because the things that are important are. You so know, really I know this. This this is what Frontier, apparently the IT people in Frontier are doing this now. That that there's a link. You could do a link so that the calendar functions. That a little, a little square on that title page that just has to, that with a little thing. Tonight's meeting, public instruction, public access instructions, and just a little yeah, two sentence yeah. thing that that is automatically created. By, by by the calendar function for every agenda and everything that goes through. Yeah, we got competition for those spots too, but, <laughs> but I can uh, I can I can see where we might fit it. So I'm going to make a motion that we that we we tell Jan that she can pay the FCAT bill for this increased amount. Yeah, okay. I'll second that. Thank you. All in favor? I hear you hey. reluctantly hey. say yes. Hey. More money, less subsidy from Deerfield. Oh, I don't know. I don't know which one bothers me more. The second one. <laughs> uh, and what is this issue about the the, the windstorm? War on the windstorm? Oh yeah. I, I, oh oh, we have to rescind I, the state of emergency. Yeah yeah. That that was just yeah. Pretty pro forma. Everybody in the meeting this morning, the after action review said it was fine to rescind the state of emergency at this point. This is just for the. Um, Windstorm. We're still in the state of emergency for the pandemic. So, is there anything else that has to happen for rescinding the state of the emergency? Is it no? Emotion? Just a motion and a. So, I'll make a motion that. that so, I declared the state of emergency and in an emergency, and uh, 
and nobody's power was out. It was nobody had power to talk about. It. So, so, so that we it seemed like at this meeting it was okay. That is your prerogative. Yes. So I make a motion that we rescind the state of emergency. Yeah. Yes. Okay. We're all in favor unanimous. And I'm indeed. Everyone who works in getting the to town through the wind event of last Wednesday and Thursday and ongoing, I might add. Uh, the highway and fire crews worked especially hard to make sure the roads were clear. And Chris Herman, in particular, led the early organizational efforts and also the groundwork to ensure our most vulnerable residents were safe. I'd also like to commend Jan Warner for putting in tremendous, a tremendous amount of work under very challenging conditions to get the tax bills out. There were software and address glitches as well as the wind event, which knocked out power for a half day and our internet capacity for almost a full day. She performed very professionally under the circumstances and deserves thanks. The financial team successfully completed its pro forma FY 2020 tax recap necessary for sending preliminary tax bills after a last minute flurry of activity and amendment. Uh, as I mentioned, tax bills went out with only a minimal delay and as always have a 30-day payment window. There's, that's one of the pieces of latest news on the website now. And they're um, all online also for online payment? Yeah, that's one of those tabs that is where the calendar might be, but is uh, The town clerk got a $5,000 grant for election-related costs. She plans to use it mainly for an electronic tabulator, which will be especially useful if ranked choice voting is established. Uh, I'd like to commend our assistant treasurer collector, Lynn Kane, for having obtained her certification as a Massachusetts municipal assistant treasurer. This involved an examination and other requirements and is a substantial accomplishment. Great. Uh, and this next paragraph is wrong. Um, you have to claim the author. <laughs> oh, no, no, it's okay. Oops. I did change it. For FEMA reimbursements after Conway seemed to have not met the minimum threshold for FEMA funding for COVID-19, which is $3,300, the school weighed in late with substantially more in claims, and I scrambled to get the application in. It can be amended, which is good, as the school added more costs today. Uh, can I, so can, that's, I stop, can I stop you there for a second, Tom? That's happening. So, is this related to? So, I, there was a whole separate thing with the four town administrators meeting with Darius. It's related. There's a state function that we apply to to get the 25 percent that FEMA doesn't pay for the things that are FEMA eligible. So there's a certain class of things that are FEMA eligible. We have to apply to FEMA for that. Then we apply to the state for the 25% of things for, for the, to make that up. And we also apply to the state for things that are not FEMA eligible. Right. So, and that deadline's a little further on. But I had to apply for the FEMA stuff first, so. So, I mean, there's still, Every, and, and every, it's amendable. Yeah, and, and yeah. there's still discussions every single school meeting every, every, uh, about whether X, Y, or Z expense can be pro applied for and how much of it and everything. And it's none of that stuff. I'm really surprised how little of it is cut and dry and how it seemed. You, know, you read about other states that are just throwing everything under the sun in there and apparently getting it all paid for. Um, we'll see. Um, yeah, this is this is the Coronavirus Relief Act, the CARES right, right. Act, and um, it has surprisingly narrow categories. With um, only three three hundred dollars, it's not very much but, money. That, yeah, well, that's FEMA. Different. That's FEMA. Yeah, FEMA's and, different. And, and that's what we had before I got the recent stuff from the school, which was a last minute scramble. Let me tell you. Um, but FEMA was very helpful. 
so that was good. Um, yeah, it's challenging. There is another category which is decided case by case. So yeah, not cut and dried. Um, state budget leaders heard from economists last week on the probable state of the FY 2021 state economy. Senate Ways and Means Chairman Senate Michael Rodriguez maintains that his goal is to have a budget for the remainder of fiscal year 2021 on the governor's desk by Halloween. That would require unprecedented cooperation between the chambers as well as a highly centralized and opaque process. Economic experts have provided a range of possible revenues and other figures for the state for the current year. The Commissioner of Revenue's figures were a decline in FY21 of total state revenues um, of about um, $2.764 billion to $5.233 billion from the projected revenue of $31.151 billion. This is out of a roughly $45 billion total state budget. Income tax revenue by itself is forecast to go down 8.3 to 13.7 percent, similar percentages to the revenue decline. Uh, for context, Massachusetts gets about 38 percent of its revenue from income taxes. Another 21 percent is from federal aid, and about 27 percent comes from other taxes. Unemployment is projected to be from 8.3 percent to 13. Point, oh, those are the same figures. Uh, doesn't look, it's, it's projected to be high. <laughs> we'll uh, delete that sentence for now, sorry. Um, Conway is down to 87 people unemployed from a high of over 200 from an original baseline of 20 plus in March, uh, which is a good trend and good news for FY21 property taxes. FY22, of course, remains terra incognito. It's not really a good trend. It's like strychnine is a good trend over cyanide kind of a thing. You know, it's just not. <laughs> well, if we've gone from 200 down to 87, that's, that's a good trend. Yeah. We're not there yet, but we're not at 20. Joe Strugowski has found that a lot the town has been interested in for some time for flood mitigation is for sale. The lot is where the river turns just south of the bridge by the Conway Inn. He's gathering information about the property and potential funding sources. Uh, so we've been interested in that, in that piece of property for a whole long time because when water comes down the South River, it comes down in a pretty straight line for a long time and then it hits a right angle before it comes under the bridge. And there's been severe damage there before. And the idea was um, if, we can, if we can lower the bank there so that when the river reaches a certain height, it spills over into this area, that could, um, that could reduce the pressure on the rest of the bank. There's so um, we're there's, just- There's a history of major industrial activity on that. Before either side, you know that really, like as toxic a stuff as ever has been made in this town. That's where it was. Well, um, anyway, that's just a heads up about that, and that's all I have. So, with all the budget going down, is there any projection of? How our budget's doing, you, you know, for what we ended up passing last year. So, so the day after that governor's conference that he's talking about, I was on with uh, Commissioner Riley in the DESE uh, statewide thing, and um, it's funny. He 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 was like, "Yeah, that that Ways and Means Chairman is out of his rocker. We're getting a budget in December if we're lucky," uh, but. <clears throat> The the, uh, the the thinking is that it's it's not going to be the worst case scenario. It's not going to be that you know that, that they're, it's, they're pretty sick. Can, they can pretty safely say that that um, you know the the things that we are most afraid of that you know aren't going to be happening. But it's still going to be ugly. 
and that next year that they're like this this budget year looks like it's not going to be nearly as bad as next budget year and that's the, the he's telling all the schools to really really uh, look at everything very carefully and plan on next year being the leanest year we've seen in a long time, but that it should be better after that, mm. That's more approximating normal after this one year, next year. Um, but uh, yeah, the, 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 when he said he said when you hear about the shortfall now, the range of the shortfall, shortfall, think pretty much in the middle of that. I'm just wondering how, how much we're, revenue we're getting compared to what we expected. Well, we won't know until we get our first tax yeah. bills back. Right. Uh huh. Um, but, okay. Yeah, it's a. Uh, yeah, so December. I, I thought, you know, we started a fiscal year in the, the, the December. Like that. The, the, they're still just, I guess, just really waiting on federal, whether there's going to be more federal money is really the key thing. And, uh, you know, it's still, that's still just as opaque and murky as it's ever been. So, but that's really, that's really important that we get out of whatever comes out of Washington, D.C., that we get federal and state aid out of that package. Is there any concerns of the selectmen? No. no. Concerns, concerns, no. Any mail? Uh, no, just, just a letter any. from the Board of Health requesting uh, the appointment. Yeah, yeah. Any announcements? I don't have any. Uh, next week, early voting starts. People want to, you know, early go into early voting. So on our town website, they go to the town website, look on the town clerks. Oh, uh, uh, no, the, the uh, yeah, the, the, uh, website and you will find all the time for early voting so I hope people do that not me you know vote in person I thought you know I, 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 vote in person so I, I, I just want to say that I think that they handled it really well I've been down two elections already now live in person voting and I thought it was handled just in a way that with and with the attention to detail that you want to see and I, I can confidently say that it's safe to vote in person in Conway. And, you know, I hope it's safe even with roving, you know, mal mass militia movement, like, you know, sending armed guards to enforce polling rights. Uh, I don't expect we'll see them here in town. But, yeah. You know, that's what they said about the tornado, too. <laughs> Voting in person seems like it is the easiest for Lori. So that feels like... Like it's a, a nice, a nice way to do it. And there, there's something soothing about the hearing the old wooden box ring. There's something soothing about that—a sense of normality. I hope that will keep happening once we go into Rector's Road. Okay, our next meeting, two weeks from yesterday, October 26th, right here in Town Hall. Very good. So I think that'll be good. Motion to adjourn. Well, motion to adjourn. Yes. We second. It's unanimous. So let's call this adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.